Good evening. We are learning Parashat Pekudei. This is the last Torah portion in Sefer Shemot in the book of Exodus. In most years it is read together with Parashat Vayakhel, the previous Parsha. But because this year is a leap year, we have an extra month, so uh, we split these two Parshiot and a few other uh, Parshiot that are usually read together. We split them and um, we read Parshat Pekudei by itself. Last week we, we learned about the um, construction of all the parts needed for the structure of the t tabernacle of the Mishkan and in this week's Parsha we will learn about uh, making of garments for Kohanim as well as we will have accounting of all the materials and the command to actually set up the Mishkan. Now let us start on page 531 of the Art Scroll Humash. These are reckonings of the tabernacle. The tabernacle of testimony. It's called the tabernacle of testimony because the Ten Commandments, the Luhod, the tablets, are called the tablets of the uh, testimony testimony being that this is our covenant this is the testimony of our covenant with God that he gave us this document in stone that we are committing to fulfill his commands and he is committing to be our God to be the one who protects us and guides us The labor of the Levites was under the authority of Itamar, son of Aharon the Kohen. Verse 22, Bezalel, son of Uri, of, uh, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, did everything that Hashem commanded Moshe. And with him was his helper, Aholiav, son of Hisamach, of the tribe of Dan. Verse 24, we count all the gold that was donated. All the gold that was used for the work, for all the holy work, was 29 talents and 730 shekels. Now, how, what is a talent? Talent is a, an ancient measure of 3,000 shekel. Um, so, altogether, there were 87,730 golden Shekalim. Verse 25, how much silver was donated? The silver of the census of the community. And uh, we say the census because Jewish people donated silver through the census, through counting the people. And uh, the total was 100 talents, 1,775 shekels in the sacred shekel and that is a total of 301,775 silver shekels and that is because the total number of the Jewish people was just above 600,000 people and if each one donated half a shekel so the total amount of silver was three, 301,000 775 shekalim and verse 27 explains what silver was used for the 100 talents of silver were cast were to cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the sac sockets of the partition what is that we had the wooden beams standing upright but the beams were placed into the silver socket. Silver socket was like the foundation of the beam and also the socket had a hole in the middle and there was a peg 
coming out of the wood inserted into the socket. So there were 100 of those sockets all together used in the Mishkan and each socket weighed one talent. Again, a talent is 3,000 shekels. So that accounts for uh, 300,000 shekalim. What about the remaining 1,775 shekalim? So on page 533, verse 28, and from the 1,775 silver shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and covered their tops and banded them. So the, 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 that little silver that was remaining were used for um, the hooks, which were made from silver, as well as bands and covers. Uh, okay, now, what about the copper in 20, verse 29? The offered out copper was 70 talents and 2,400 uh, uh, 2, shekels. Together, totaling 212 thousand and four hundred shekalim verse 30 explains what they made from this copper with it he made the sockets of the entrance to the tent of meeting pillars outside of the tent of meeting had copper um, foundations as well as the copper altar the copper altar was plated with copper it was made of wood and plated with copper as well as the copper meshwork that was on it and all the vessels of the altar and verse 31 continues sockets of the courtyard and the sockets of the gate of the courtyard and all the pegs of the tabernacle good now we finished um, listing gold silver and copper and now chapter 39 tells us um, about making of the, the garments. Verse 1. From the turquoise, purple, and scarlet wool, they made knit vestments. They were the um, cloth that they used to cover all the holy utensils when they traveled. They would cover them into this cloth, the, the, the Kohanim. And when they were all covered, then the Levites would come and carry them. So that the Levites and the Israelites should not um, see the holy, gar the holy utensils. And verse 1 continues, And they made the holy vestments for Aharon. As Hashem commanded Moshe, now we describe how they made each one of the the garments of Aaron. We start with ephod. Ephod is the apron-like garment that had shoulder straps going from the back until the shoulders and on the shoulders it had two precious stones with names of the Jewish people, um, the tribes engraved on them. He made the ephod of gold, turquoise, purple, and scarlet wool, and twisted linen. Uh, how did they introduce gold into the fabric of the ephod? Verse 3 explains. They hammered out the thin, thin sheets of gold. First, they took a chunk of gold they hammered it out into a very thin sheet of gold very very thin like paper maybe even thinner and then they took this piece of uh, golden paper and they cut it into very thin strands strips of gold and they used those strips of gold as uh, thread and they mixed it together, they twisted it together with uh, turquoise wool, purple wool, and scarlet wool, and linen, and created one large thread, and from it they made a ford. 
verse 4 they attach shoulder straps to it attached to its two ends verse 5 describes the belt of the ephod the belt with which it was emplaced which was on it was made from it from the same workmanship of gold turquoise purple, purple and scarlet wool or linen twisted as Hashem had commanded Moshe now we speak about the stones that were on the shoulder straps verse 6 they're called shoham stones they made the shoham stones encircled with gold settings engraved like the engraving of the signet ring according to the names of the sons of israel he placed them on the shoulder straps of the ephod as remembrance stones for the sons of israel as hashem had commanded moshe so that whenever kohen gadol goes into the, the beta mikdash or he goes into the holy or into the holy of holies the names of the jewish people appear in front of hashem and so to say hashem remembers the jewish people for good verse 8 describes the breastplate the square um woven garment that was folded in half and it had 12 stones um in the golden setting and again upon each stone was engraved one of the tribes of the jewish people verse 8 he made the breastplate of a weaver's craft like the workmanship of the ephod it was made from similar thread of gold turquoise purple and scarlet wool and linen all twisted it was square folded over did they make the breastplate Its length was half a cubit. Half a cubit is the uh, half of the distance between the fingertips until the elbow. This is called the cubit. Ama. Half of that is the size of the breastplate. It was uh, half a cubit width and half a cubit um, length. Folded over means really they made it double the size. It was an entire cubit uh, length and only half a cubit width. And when they folded it, you got two, squa two equal squares. Why they needed to have the fold? Because into the fold, they put the name of God. And that gave this effort special powers that if the king or the Kohen Gadol would ask God a question the stones on the breastplate would light up and since each each stone had uh, letters engraved on it the letters themselves would light up and depending on the letters that would light up the Kohen Gadol would compose the answer the message was lighting up this was like the first screen um, like the first computer screen with letters popping up and uh, making words verse 14 actually um, verse 10 they filled it with four rows of stones and then the 12 stones are listed verse 14 the stones were according to the names of the sons of Israel 12 according to their names verse 15 for the breastplate they made chains at the eight edges of braided craftsmanship of pure gold and with, with these chains the breastplate was attached to the straps of the ephod now we turn to page 535 verse 18 the two ends of the two ropes they placed on the settings and placed them on the shoulder straps of the ephod toward the front verse 21 they attached the breastplate from they attached the breastplate from its rings to the rings of the ephod with a turquoise woolen cord that means that the breastplate was attached from above it was hanging above on the shoulder straps and it had 
turquoise woolen cord on the bottom of it to attach it to the belt. Now, verse 22, we describe the, the robe. They made the robe of the ephod of a weaver's craft entirely of turquoise wool. It was blue wool, like techelet. The entire garment was made from blue wool. Um, verse 24, on the robe's hem they made pomegranates of turquoise, purple and scarlet wool, twisted. And they made bells of pure gold. gold. And they placed the bells between the pomegranates on the hem of the robe. Which means on the bottom of the robe there were hanging bells and pomegranates. Golden bells and pomegranates made from colored wool. Alter al alternating. And the reason for that was so that when Kohen Gadol walks, his robe makes um, noise, and when he enters the holy, it's uh, as if we are announcing his coming into the uh, the house of God. Now, verse twenty-seven, we we describe the tunics of linen. They made the tunics of linen of weaver's craft for Aharon and his sons. Unlike the other garments which were only for Aharon and for the high priest for Kohen Gadol, the tunics of linen were worn by regular Kohanim as well. And the turban of linen, turban is the linen uh, hat, and the splendid headdress of linen, and the linen breeches, breeches are um, pants, of twisted linen white pants and white hat and a white undershirt verse 29 and sash of twisted linen sash is a belt and this belt had a kilaim in it because it says the sash of twisted linen turquoise purple and scarlet wool the the um, many of the garments of Kohen Gadol had kilaim in it including this belt and as we explained before if at the time of uh, doing a mitzvah you also have to do a something that is normally prohibited and there is no other way of doing a mitzvah except by doing something that is normally prohibited we allow you to do the mitzvah despite the fact that it's attached to a prohibition because we say uh, that if god tells us not to do something and then he tells us to do something and by doing that we will be transgressing what he asked us not to do since he told us to actually do it it means it overrides the prohibition and the example is the garments of Kohen Gadol, as well as the um, strings of tzitzit, if they're made from wool, and we put them in a linen garment, so that is kilaim, but because we're fulfilling the mitzvah of tzitzit, that would be permitted. Um, in verse 30, we describe the construction of the head plate. The golden head plate upon which it was it said holy to God. They made the head plate the holy crown of pure gold. And they inscribed on it with script like that of a signet ring. Holy to Hashem. They placed on it a cord of turquoise wool and put over the turban to put over the turban from above. Verse 32, the final verses of the of the uh, building of the, the Mishkan. All the work of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, was completed. And the children of Israel had done everything that Hashem commanded Moshe, so did they do. The Midrash says that this was completed on the 25th day of Kislev, which is nowadays the first day of Hanukkah. Of course, at that time, Hanukkah didn't happen yet. 
verse 33 they brought the tabernacle to Moshe the tent and all its utensils and uh, all the parts of the tabernacle are listed we turn to page 537 verse 42 like everything that Hashem commanded Moshe so did the children of Israel perform all the labor Moshe inspects the tabernacle all the work Moshe saw the entire work and behold they had done it as Hashem had commanded so they had done and Moshe blessed them now Moshe and the Jewish people expected that Hashem will tell them now that everything is ready assemble the tabernacle right away which would have been the first day of Hanukkah but in chapter 40 Hashem spoke to Moshe saying on the day of the first new moon which means the first month which is Nisan not Kislev on the first of the month you shall erect the tabernacle, the tent of meaning. Everyone was surprised. Now it's Kislev, and you're telling us to wait until Nisan. We have to wait the entire month of Tevet, the entire month of Shavat, the entire month of Adar, and only then build the Mishkan. Why should we wait three months? And Hashem said, I want the holy service in the tabernacle start on the first month on the month of miracles when the Jewish people left Egypt and Midrash says that the 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 days of the five the last five days of Kislev and the first three days of uh, Tevet complained they said it was fitting for the tabernacle to be, be inaugurated for seven days and then finally built on the eighth day on us why are you postponing it we are missing out and Hashem said don't worry I'm taking this away from you but I will give you another inauguration of the temple in the times of the second temple when the Greeks defiled Beit HaMikdash the Hashmonaim came and fought and conquered the Beit HaMikdash back and they inaugurated Beit HaMikdash for um, eight days again. And we celebrate that in our holiday of uh, Hanukkah. And the days <coughs> were appeased. So now we have two periods of inauguration of, of the temple. One on Hanukkah, the eight days of Hanukkah, and one from the uh, the last seven days of Adar and the first day of Nisan the seven days of Adar Moshe would set up the tabernacle serve in it for practice as the Kohen Gadol himself and then towards the evening he would disassemble the Mishkan the next day he would do the same thing he would assemble serve and disassemble and like that for seven days and on the eighth day which is the Rosh Chodesh Nisan the first day of the first month Aharon became the Kohen Gadol and together with their with his sons they served in the Mishkan the Mishkan was built for the final time and the Kohanim um, started official service in it now verse 3 once you make the tent of meeting which is another name for tabernacle there you shall place the ark of testimony the holy ark with the uh, luchot the tablets of the ten commandments and screen the ark with a partition and they they hung the partition in front of the holy of holies 
You shall bring the table into the holy and prepare its setting, the bread. Bring the menorah and kindle its lamps. You shall place the gold altar for incense in front of the Ark of the Testimony and place the curtain of the entrance of the tabernacle. Place the elevation offering altar in front of the entrance to the tabernacle. Place the laver, the wash basin next to it, next to the altar and put water in it. Create the courtyard all around with uh, lace hangings and pillars and place the curtain as the gate of the courtyard. Take the anointment oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything that is in it by sprinkling the oil on all the utensils and onto the, on the tabernacle. Sanctify it and all its utensils and it shall become holy. You shall anoint the elevation offering altar, the, the copper altar and its utensils, and you shall sac sanctify the altar and the altar shall become holy of holies. You shall anoint sprinkle some oil over the laver and its stand and sanctify it. Now, page 539. Aharon and his children are anointed. The word anointed means Mashuah or the person who is anointed is called Mashiach. That is why uh, our Redeemer is called Messiah or Mashiach. Mashiach means the anointed one because Mashiach is going to be our king and kings as well as Kohanim were anointed with this anointment oil. Verse 12 on page 539, you shall bring Aharon and his sons near the entrance of the tent of meaning and immerse them in water. They have to go to the mikveh first to purify themselves. And then verse 13, you shall dress Aharon in the sacred vestments and anoint him with oil. You shall sanctify him and he shall minister to me. And his sons you shall bring near and dress them in tunics. You shall anoint them as you had anointed their father, and they shall minister to me. Moshe did according to everything that Hashem commanded him, so he did. And now, three months later, verse 17, the tabernacle is erected. It was in the first month of the second year, on the first of the month that the tabernacle was erected. The first month is Nisan on Rosh Chodesh. Moshe erected the tabernacle. He put down its sockets and emplaced its planks and inserted its bars and erected its pillars. Now, the Midrash says that when the time came to lift up the, 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 the beams of wood, Moshe and the Jewish people felt that it cannot be done. These were huge beams, two feet in uh, length, one and a half foot in width, huge beams, solid wood, and they were 15 feet high. And Moshe said, God, how can it, how, how is it possible? How is it humanly possible to lift such a huge beam without any machinery? And Hashem said to Moshe, don't worry, just try. So Moshe went to the pillar and touched it. As soon as he touched it, the pillar started rising up. And all Moshe had to do, just touch it. As he was touching, the pillar stood straight up. This was to teach us that if God tells you to do something, or if you volunteer to do something for God, there are no limitations. All the rules of nature are going to be uh, twisted in order to accommodate you. You will receive special divine help and therefore a Jew should never give up, should never place artificial limitations on himself. Whatever you think is right, try to do it and you will see that you will be successful. Now, 
verse 19, he spread the 